At this time, we will have the prayer of invocation by Pastor Larry Rogers. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine known way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will. While I am waiting, yield it and still. Lord, we come in this morning, head bowed, and our attention toward to you in the heavens above. We have come at a time when we are experiencing difficult moments in our nation. With the insurrection at the Capitol, Lord, have thine known way. With the rising death toll on account of COVID-19, Lord, have thine own way. With the impeachment of the president for a second time, Lord, have thine own way. With the slow distribution of the virus, Lord, have thine own way. With the continued threats of violence, mayhem, and unrest at state capitals around the nation, Lord, have thine own way. With a nation at a fever pitch with anxiety and uncertainty as to what violence is going to come ne occur next, Lord, have thine own way. With citizens disobeying health protocols and not wearing masks, Lord, have thine own way. Lord, have thine own way. Have thine own way. Thou art the potter and we are the clay. Mold us and make us after thy will. Lord, mold us and make us with the ignoration of President-elect Biden, Vice President Harris. Lord, mold us and make us by the healing of the wounds of division in this society. Lord, mold us and make us by restoring the democratic norms and the rule of law that has been trampled upon by this president. Lord, mold us and make us by removing the racial health and employment disparities in our society. Lord, mold us and make us by focusing on the least, the lost, and the left behind. Lord, mold us and make us by allowing every member of Mount Pleasant and Greater Liberty Hill to become more committed to do thy will this year. Lord, mold us and make us after thy will. While we are waiting, yield it and still. Lord, if it means we have to establish a daily devotion, let it be. Lord, if it means that we have to confess our sins one to another, Lord, let it be. Lord, if it means that we have to forgive those who have trespassed against us, Lord, let it be. Lord, if it means that we have to love and serve those that we don't like, Lord, let it be. Lord, have thine own way in this year, 2021. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, family. Good morning, Mount Pleasant. Good morning, Greater Liberty Hill. How be you this morning? I see each and every one of you in my sanctified imagination. I see that some of you are still at the breakfast table. I see that some of you are debating whether or not you're even going to get dressed today. But no matter what you're thinking, no matter what you're doing right now, we praise God that you've turned in to hear a word from the Lord, that you've come to join us in worshiping our Lord and Savior. Our Lord and Savior deserves all of our praise, all of our worship, because he is good, and it's in him alone that we have our beings. So we are so thankful to see you in my sanctified imagination. And guess what? One day, the Lord is going to heal this land. And at that point, we will be back in the sanctuary and we
we will be having a mighty good time and we will be hugging and kissing on each other because we will be so happy to see each other. So until that day comes, let's continue to worship and praise the Lord virtually and let's continue to have our sanctified imagination where we see each other. So we praise God for you this morning. Amen? Thank you for your amen. I heard it. <laughs> we don't have that many announcements this morning. Uh, the church council meeting has been rescheduled from Monday, January the 18th to Monday, January the 25th. Church council meeting will be on Monday, January the 25th at 6 p.m. via Zoom. Okay, so mark your calendars. And that's the only announcement that I have other than the regular announcements of please continue to call and check on the, the sick and shut-in. Let's continue to wear our mask. Um, seniors, citizens, please continue to try and get your vaccines if, you're, if you have determined that you want to take one. And let's continue to seek the Lord in everything that we do so that we will be a blessing to God and that we will be a blessing to someone else. Amen? Amen. Now we're at that point of the service where everyone can be involved virtually. And guess what that part of the service is? You're right. It's the worship of giving. We praise God that God has made us good stewards over that which he has put in our possession to manage. So our tithes and offerings continue to be needed. Why, you may be asking. Because even though we're not in the sanctuary, ministry is still going forth. And we need the funds in order to make that happen. So we praise God for those who are continuing to tithe and continuing to give their offering. And Jesus said in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your laps. And I know you want that to happen in your lives. Therefore, if we are good stewards over the resources that God has provided to us, God will continue to bless us. And our laps will be pouring over with the blessings from the Lord. And you know there's several ways we can give. We can use the online give a, um, give a lift app. We can mail it to, my, to the churches. We can put it in the church's mailbox and we can, you know, use our banks. When, when you go in each uh, month to pay your bills, you can just set up your account right there to give your offering unto your church, amen? So thank you for your worship and giving, and thank you for continuing to give so that ministry can go forth, even though we're not meeting in the church facilities. We praise God for each and every one of you, and we praise God that he continues to bless us and continues to require us to be the stewards that he has ordained in our lives. We're going to ask Pastor Larry to come up and read the scripture. After he has read the scripture, which is Romans 8, verses 31 to 32, then Pastor Richardson will give a sermonic selection, and after that, we will hear from our pastor, um, Reverend Frazier, who will bring the sermon of the hour so that we can be renewed. Amen? So wait at your tent's doors, pray. Amen. Pastor Larry. The scripture this morning is found in the book, New Testament book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 through 32. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. What shall we say about such wonderful things as these? If God is for us, who can be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son, but gave us up for us all, won't he also give us everything else. The word of God for the people of God. Bless be God.
but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things that we need? Some of your translations say graciously give us all things. For the few moments that we have on this day, I want you to pray with me on this subject of a different kind of love. A different kind of love. If you're sitting seated next to someone in the comforts of your home or next to someone riding in your car, say to them with a smile on your face, say a different kind of love. A different kind of love. Will you bow your heads with me as we pray together? Lord, once again, we pause just to say thank you. You've been our supplier. You've been our sustainer. Even in the midst of these troubled times, we've been able to keep our hands in your hands because we know that you hold the world in the palm of your hand. And we just ask, oh God, you, you know what not only what we need, but what this country needs. And we just ask that your spirit now would move throughout this world, and particularly in this nation, that men and women will yield to your will and yield to your way and to your word for our everyday lives. We thank you, O God, for what you have done, but even as we continue to pray for what you will do, we're going to thank you in advance for sending a spirit of peace and calm, a collective spirit of unity as we seek to be about a nation under God. We thank you for your power and for your presence as we worship together. Help us to feel you nudging us and impacting our every move and, and help us to feel your power, oh God, in all of our situations and circumstances. We, we need you to speak right now, Lord. We need you to simply have thine own way. We won't tell you what to do, oh God, or how to do it. We just going to trust that you will. We thank you now and pray that you take these words and make them thine. Let your voice be heard and not mine. We ask it all in your son's name. Let the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. Once again, let me hear you say a different kind of love. True story was told about a lady who owned and operated her own daycare center. And she tells the true story of a young girl, a four-year-old, who was brought into her daycare center for her to take care of her. But this four-year-old girl was different. She was different from the other girls. She was different from the other kids. She had been born in prison. Her mother was incarcerated because of drugs, and she used drugs throughout her entire pregnancy. And so this little baby girl, when she was born, she was born with the label of being a crack baby. She had many problems. She had many fears. And, and she never spoke to the people at the nursery. And it just so happened that one day when, when, when they brought the young, the young girl in, she came in crying and, 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 and having a fit. And one of the staff members picked up and took her to the office of the owner, the sole proprietor of this daycare, and put her in her office. And the owner took the young girl in her arms and went over to the rocking chair that she had over in the corner of her office. And she began to take this little four-year girl in her arms and start to rock her and soothe her and, 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 and make her feel comfortable. But in doing so, she decided to sing to her. She sang this song, Jesus loves me, this I know, 
for the Bible what tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, she would sing to him while rocking her in her arms, while soothing her. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. But the Bible tells me. So y'all know that song? Come on, sing it a little bit with Pastor David. Wherever you are, in the comforts of your home, doesn't matter. Come on, sing this song with me. Jesus loves me. about a 60-40. I'm talking about a what? 
50-50 love. T T Teddy is talking about giving love and expecting love in return. There's a major difference between the way humans love and the way the holy God loves. Now, now tell your neighbor, don't get that twisted. Don't, don't get it twisted. The Bible says in John 3.16, and it bears witness to this different kind of love. John 3.16 is one of the most quoted scriptures in the entire Bible since the printed press. And John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world. Now most of us are crystal clear on, on who, who the source is in terms of this different kind of love. But what we so often miss is the scope of that love. Back in December, when we celebrated the birth of him who was given to pay the penalty for us, Christmas is in fact the celebration of the love of God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, he, he so loved us so much that he pulled off his royal robe in glory and put on a robe of flesh and stepped down to the, back, to the backside of a barn in Bethlehem only to end up on a cross on Calvary just so we could have our death sinners removed for the sin and set aside on our behalf. He took the punishment for us. He died in our place and we celebrate his birth and we are, what we are celebrating when we do that is the love of God because it is a different kind of love. And our response or question never, should never be what can I get from God but perhaps what can I give to God in response to the kind of love that God has already given me. Now, what can I give in response to the love that was made manifested by the gift of Jesus Christ, a love that became flesh and dwelt among us, a love that showed us how to love, a love that showed us how to forgive, a love that demonstrated peace in a climate and a culture of hate, a love that lifted us even when we were falling down, like the song said, love lifted me. When I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master, the song says, heard my despairing cry and from the waters lifted me. Now safe am I. The, the chorus says what? Love lifted me. I'm telling you, it's a different kind of love. And here in Romans chapter 8 is a powerful and prof profound description of the depth and the difference the love of God makes. Paul is trying to get us to understand. Come on, back up to verse 31. I'm with me through in these nine, eight, nine verses. Verses 31 through 39 that the love of God is a different kind of love because lesson number one, you can write this down because it is enduring. Come on, say that. Say enduring. enduring. And closely related to that lesson is the second lesson, which is Paul says it is also enabling. Look at these nine verses with me right quick because they describe the kind of love that every believer, I'm telling you, needs to memorize and make a part of his or her daily devotion. Look at it because God's love is enduring and his love is enabling. Now let me unpack both of those for you right quick. It is enduring and it is enabling. Back up to verse 35. Look, at, look, look Let me show you what the Lord showed me in verse 35. Look at it. I call these the obvious lessons. Because it is a different kind of love. Look at it. Paul says, who shall separate us from the love of God? Who, who is referring to a person? Then Paul says, shall trouble, trouble. Paul is referring to a predicament. Neither of those can stand in the weight of God's enduring and enabling love. Why? Because God's love cannot be controlled by a person and neither is it confined by your predicament. Okay, let me say that again. God's love cannot be controlled by a person. Neither can it be confined by your condition. Think, look, look, this is some good news. I don't care if people don't like you because of the color of your skin or because of the texture of your hair. It will not stop God from loving you. Verse 35 and 36, Paul says in this letter, that's which makes a difference in terms of God's love being enduring. Paul says, look at it. Regardless of who we face as we go through life, and regardless of what we face as we go through life, neither is able to come between the love that God has for us. It is enduring. His love was, will endure through any and everything. And too often we get caught up 
in the things that happen to us and we feel like God has forsaken us and too often we feel that God has forgotten us. Too often we think that God does not want to deal with us and if you're listening and you feel that way, you need to sit up on the edge of your seat. You need to know that God's love is different. huh? It's a different kind of love because it comes with a promise. A promise that he will be with us. What? Always his love is enduring. It comes with a promise that nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love in Christ Jesus. And incidentally, that word separate in this text, separate is more strongly tied to the word division or divide. Nothing will be able to divide us from the love of God. Paul wants his readers to know from the outset by setting the record straight by telling us that the love of God cannot be controlled by a person and the love of God cannot be confined by your predicament because God's love is different and it is enduring and then second of all, it is enabling. Look at verse 37. You see, after Paul says no person can, con no person can control the love of God, after he says no predicament can confine the love of God, Paul continues to proceed by calling the role in the ongoing verses, and he tells us that the love of God is enabling. Look at verse 37. He says, we are more than conquerors. How? Through him that loves us. Let me read that again. Paul says, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Uh, because of his love, verse 37, Paul says it's a different kind of love because his love is enabling. Paul says in spite of the things that we go through, Paul says that we are more than conquerors when we face the battles of this life. Why? Because he lives within us and enables us to stand. In other words, nothing can come between us and God's love for us. God's love for us produces not only endurance, but it also produces perseverance. And every true child of God is enabled by the prevailing love of God to carry on in spite of what you go through. When, when you have to weather the storms of conflict, when you have to weather the storms of affliction, when you have to weather the storms of turmoil and persecution, according to this verse, the love of God enables us to persevere until the end. And I know that, that God knows that we are climbing up the rough side of the mountain right now. That, that, that's what verse 35 says. Huh? We, we, we are going through some troubling times. People are dying at the hands of an unseen enemy by the hundreds of thousands in this country. This, this is hardship. Folks are being laid off from their jobs by record numbers. The unemployment rate is rising through the roof while food lines are not getting shorter. They're getting longer and longer. We are well acquainted with trouble and hardship. And if you are in distress, the Bible talks about being in distress. That means you are worried. That means you are being troubled. That means you are in pain. That means you are suffering. And some of us are well acquainted with it, just being in distress. And Paul says in verse 35 that not even distress, not even suffering will be able to separate us from the love of God because God's love cannot be confined by distress. God's love cannot be confined by hardship. The love of God knows no limits because the love of God is different, but he knows what we are going through. I heard our ancestors sing this song that nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows, but who? Jesus, that, that's some good news. The love of God cannot be controlled by a person. The love of God cannot be confined by our predicament. But then finally, Paul teaches us in this text that yes, the love of God is a different kind of love because yes, lesson number one, it is enduring. And lesson number two, it is enabling. It, it has no built-in conditions or clauses. That's what I love about the love of God. It has no built-in conditions under which it operates or no other conditions under which it does not operate. I think I better say that again. It has no built-in conditions under which it operates and there are no other conditions under which it does not operate. It means that God's love is a different kind of love because it is unconditional. That's some more good news that somebody listening to right now. Somebody who thinks that you have done something so wrong. You think that you've done something so terrible that God can never love you. 
Somebody thinks that you have sunk so low that, that you are beyond the grip of God's grace and you think that God can never love you. Somebody who has turned their backs on God and have decided to do things your way and messed it up. Whatever you have done, guess what? I got some news for you. Whatever you have done does not stop God from loving you because there is no condition on the love of God. God's love is unconditional. God's love is not restricted. God's love is not limited. God's love knows no limits or limitations. One songwriter said it this way, the blood of Jesus, it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows through the lowest valley. But then there's even some better news in verse 38 and then I'm through. What, what Paul is saying as I hurry to my close, that yes lesson number one, the love of God is enduring it, it cannot be controlled by a person. And yes, the love of God is enabling, it cannot be confined by our predicament. The love of God is not based on circumstance or condition, but ultimately in verse 38 Paul says that the love of God is different in that it covers you from time till eternity. I guess somebody should go, where is that preacher? Look at it, look at it. I don't want you to miss this. It's a different kind of love. Yes. Not only is it enduring and enabling, but lesson number three, it is everlasting. Yes. Come on, say that. Say it's enabling, enabling. it's enduring, enduring, and it's everlasting. Verse 39 and 38, Paul, Paul closes this chapter out by speaking confidently. He tells us, that what we have is not a hope so thing, but what we have is a for sure thing. He, he's speaking confidently in verse 30. He tells us here that there's nothing from the beginning of our lives to the end of our lives that will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. He, he was a loving God before we got here. And he'll be a loving God until we leave. Look, his love is everlasting. It's the kind of love that makes your heart sing. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. It's the kind of love that'll make this thing amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the rich like me. It's the kind of love that'll make you sing as like that little girl when she looked up in that owner's eyes and said, sing to me that song about that man. Yes, Jesus loved me. Yes, the Bible tells me so that love. It's the kind of love that'll make you sing and thank God for me having some enduring love. Thank him for having enabling love and thank him for having everlasting love. His love makes me realize what a gift each day is. Yeah. That's what David meant when David said, goodness and mercy shall follow me, yeah. not just on some day, but all the days of my life because the love of God is everlasting. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. God's love is always present to cover you with new mercies and somebody ought to thank him for that. Huh? His love is not confined. You ought to thank him for that. His love is not based on circumstance. Thank him for that. His love is unconditional. His love covers you from the top of your head to the tip of your toe. The love of God covers you in all that you do and all that you think and all that you say. His love is the greatest love that has ever been given can still be received on this day. It's the kind of love that beyond a verbal expression, but it can be an inward experience if you just receive him in your heart. I want you to just bow your heads right where you are. And as you bow, I want you to feel God's loving arms hugging you and holding you, letting you know that you are loved. In spite of it all, in the midst of it all, we serve a God who will not leave us alone. We serve a God who will not give up on us. We serve a God who is able, even now, to speak to your circumstance, your condition, your situation, because he loves you and he cares deeply for you. And he's the kind of God who only wants what's best for you. You can receive him right now, wherever you are, if you're listening. 
to the sound of my voice, you can invite him in your heart right now. You can say and sing like that little girl. Yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done and even for what you get ready to do. Let your love continue to sustain us and supply us according to our every need. Thank you now and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let every heart say amen and amen. God bless you and may God keep you is our prayer.